All right, I'm going to be talking about a uh, quick and dirty back focus test, or front focus. Back focus and front focus is when uh, you take a picture and you focus on someone's eyes and you notice that their ears are the sharpest part of the picture and you can never quite get their eyes quite as sharp as you want, or, or your pictures are always a little bit soft and you notice that the object in focus is always a little bit either in front of the where the subject was or behind the, the subject. Um, the quickest way... See, I'm going to use my camera as a screenshot recording device here. It is open up Excel and draw a little crosshair in it with a couple blocks. What you do is uh, click on the top right corner of the screen here, or the top left, sorry, and select all, and then you can resize the blocks to be squares. So I think by default they look something like that. Click on the corner, drag the box to the left, and then you get a whole bunch of little squares. And the little squares are good reference to tell if the center object's in focus or not. They're easy to see detail from a distance. So now you take your monitor and you twist it or angle it about 45 degrees so that the far side of the monitor is in the background and the front side is in the foreground. Now you take a couple steps back. I can only go so far with the cable connected to the camera. And then I'm going to zoom in. And now I'm going to focus on the crosshair. And now I'm going to take my picture. And you need a fairly fast shutter speed. If you need to, increase the ISO. It doesn't really matter if you've got grain. And as you can see, if you scroll left and right, you see the sharpest part. So you can see the blocks, and within the blocks you can see the individual pixels from the monitor. And with that you can judge whether or not the object you focused on is the sharpest part of the screen. I'm going to try another shot. I'm going to zoom in. And to the right is blurry, to the left is blurry. If anything I'd say there is a very slight back focus but the thing you have to be uh, aware of is the focus is not 100% perfect. There are steps, graduations. Uh, if you set the camera for continuous focus and you hold the focus down, I can't demonstrate it in this live view mode, and so you're doing continuous focus, you hold the focus, or you hold the shutter halfway down so it's continuously focusing, and uh, walk towards and away from your target you'll notice that the camera only focuses about every couple inches that you move which means you've got at least that much margin of error in your front of back focus so you really should take a whole bunch of shots of your target at uh, slightly different distances to kinda get your average and then from your average you can adjust your front focus or back focus and the D300 lets you do that in software all the other Nikons, at least the D70 and probably the D80 and everything else, has a uh, a little hex screw that's back near the center that is a uh, oval shape that's off-center so that as you turn it, it moves the uh, the mirror just a little bit. It, I'm not sure if it moves the mirror, but it moves something just a little bit so that... Uh, yeah, it moves the mirror to the focus center just a little bit so that you can adjust your front-to-back focus, but like I said, it's very close to the sensor, and so it's a uh, a little dangerous because if you touch the sensor with your Allen wrench or hex wrench, uh, you can scratch it pretty easily. But the D300, let me show you, has uh, under the setup menu, there's an autofocus fine tune, and it remembers which lens you have. Now, if you've got multiple 18 to 200s, it won't be able to tell the difference between them, 
but uh, it allows you to number them so that you can like for example put the last two digits of the serial number of your lens so you know which one to grab which one's calibrated so if I wanted to I could uh, change the focus on my camera to be a little bit more front focus but I'm not going to because I've noticed on average zero is about right for this lens now my other older lenses that I have I've got uh, 80 to 200 2.8 and a 105 uh, actually I can show you these are the three lenses that I've calibrated. The older ones that are non-AFS uh, at a distance have some pretty long focus steps from uh, step to step and sometimes the camera if you're like right in the middle it'll hunt back and forth and uh, especially at the 1.8 and 2.8 the object that's in focus can be uh, two inches ahead or two inches behind and it depends on where you're standing so if you're doing your focus, your front focus, back focus testing with one of those older lenses that's non-AFS, I suggest at least taking like 10 pictures at uh, varying differences or distances and find the one that uh, is th the average. Otherwise, uh, that's all I got for that. Have fun. Bye. Okay, so uh, there's one more thing I want to say about back focus, and that's that... Uh, a lot of people think they have a back focus problem when it's really a focus composition problem. Uh, traditionally, people have been kind of taught to focus on the eyes and then recompose the shot to have more of the person's body in the picture and their head t closer to the top of the frame. And this is the reason why you want to use the built-in focus adjustments in the camera so that uh, you pick what part of the screen is in focus. If you focus on the person's eyes, you'll see here uh, let's say the black bar, I'm going to try and zoom in, no not out, zoom in. So here's the camera, the black line represents the uh, area that you're focusing on and the vertical black bar represents all of the area that's in focus after we focus on their eye. It's pretty much uh, the front of their body all the way up and down. So that's fine, that's what we want. Except now when you recompose and you're holding the shutter halfway down, you're moving the focus point down to here. We follow the red line because the focus point arcs down like a circle because it's a fixed distance while you're holding the uh, shutter halfway down. And now look at your focus plane. Uh, their feet are behind the focus and their head is in front of the focus plane. So now when you look at their head, their ear is going to be the most sharp part of the picture and their chest will be um, also in focus, but their eyes will not, and neither will their legs. And that's why you want to point the camera towards their torso to begin with and use the, uh, use the selector inside the camera to focus on the eyes. So you compose the shot the way you want it to be when you're ready to take the picture and use the, uh, the focus selector built into the camera and scroll it up to the top of the screen and then take your picture. I hope that makes sense. Bye.